See if I walked around this room and started to collect samples, take it back to the lab, and start to test it for past exposure to herpes simplex virus type 1. It's likely that 50 to 80% of us have been exposed to the virus. Actually, we're still carrying the virus in our body. However, we are healthy, happy, no symptoms, no health problem whatsoever. And that's what we call viral latency, in which the virus is present. However, it's controlled by our immune system, so it cannot replicate, and therefore no symptoms. Due to periodic viral reactivation episodes, some symptoms start to appear, and that can be mild as cold sores, but it can be more serious as keratitis and eye infection, which can lead to blindness, or even worse, it can be lead to encephalitis and death. It's really that battle between our immune system and the viral countermeasure is what determines the outcome of the infections. And understanding that host pathogen interactions is of a great importance to identify novel therapeutic targets. In our lab, we have optimized a protocol to label the viral DNA. So we can visually track it in the infected cells, remarkably within 30 minutes of infections. The viral DNA was totally encased within these green dots called PML nuclear bodies, and that was enough to silence the viral genome. However, as you increase the viral dose, the virus starts to escape from this immune response. And it started to replicate, and that's when PML nuclear bodies changed their structure and the way how they look in order to signal a second arm and a more sophisticated immune response called interferon-stimulated genes. The virus didn't like that and came up with a better plan, which is expressing a viral protein called ICB0 that's within one hour to two hours of infections completely degrades PML, so to create for, it, for itself an immunity-free environment so it can replicate without any disruption. So if you want to win the battle against HSV1 infections, the current knowledge in the field along with our data suggests that you find a drug that stop the ICB0 expression, or at least stop its action. Thanks for listening.